Today, the oil industry does not have the reputation of being forward-looking, but that was not the case in the 50s because they were among the first to make practical use of these time series analysis tools that have been developed primarily here at MIT. They actually put a, a small charge of dynamite down a little hole and create a very miniature, localized sort of an earthquake. Uh, there it goes. And that's that sound waves to going off that go down uh, below the ground and are recorded on something that we call a seismogram that looks like this. My major as an undergraduate was geophysics, which is one of the first schools where you could get a degree in geophysics. When I was admitted by graduate school, I faced the problem of uh, um, uh, feeding myself. There was this geophysical analysis group, or GAG, which had been founded by Robinson with funding from the oil and service industry in 1951. So I joined it in 1953. Robinson was a graduate of the math department here. And then he went and studied economics under Professor Paul Samuelson. But then after he got his master's, Enders decided to get a PhD in mathematics. So he began working under Norbert Wiener. Wiener dedicated a lot of his research and his life to the study of time series, say the stock market index or a recording of atmospheric pressure over time. Th these are all time series. Enders and another professor who was originally one of Wiener's students by the name of Wadsworth, who was a statistician, convinced the geology and geophysics department to co-sponsor a consortium. Robinson at that time knew nothing about geophysics, nor did Wadsworth. However, Wadsworth was in a carpool with Pat Hurley. Pat Hurley was a nuclear geologist in the precursor to this department. During the ride, they both lived in Lexington, to Cambridge, chatted about what each other was doing. And Wadsworth was telling him, I work with time series. And Hurley, who was a geologist, knew what a time series was. And he thought of seismograms. Wadsworth said, well, I have a grad student, Anders Robinson, who has background in time series analysis. And they decided they needed funding. So with the help of Hurley, who had contacts with the oil industry, they got a bunch of oil companies and service companies to chip in. And that was enough to support a group of graduate students. The particular early application was to seismograms that are corrupted by multiple bounces in the subsurface. That was the first problem that Geophysical Analysis Group was assigned to eliminate using very primitive methods to digitize the data, namely graduate students to look at the data and read the amplitudes of the traces by eye. And you could only do this for so long before the traces started merging in your eyes and you had to stop. The MIT Whirlwind computer had just been installed in its earliest version. These coded numbers appear as perforations on a piece of paper tape and contain all the information needed. The geophysical analysis group then began to use the Verwin computer to do our early work. We were able to show that you could filter the data in such a way that you attenuated the multiples mm -hmm. and brought out the so-called primary reflections. We had sponsors meetings once a year. They said, this is all very nice, uh, but first of all, we don't have digital computers. And secondly, how do we change our seismic recordings, which were recorded on paper? So we can't afford to have our geophysicists, and we pay handsomely, <laughs> spend all day reading these numbers. And so the next step was 
for the electronics industry to realize the importance of building analog to digital instruments. But by the early 60s, A to D in shorthand converters came to the market and were immediately put into use by the oil industry. One of the earliest graduates with his PhD is a fellow by the name of Mark Smith. He went to work for Geophysical Service Incorporated, or GSI, and he was the one who introduced, first introduced digital techniques to GSI. So they were the first company to benefit directly. The second oil company that benefited from these results was through me, and that was Amoco, known as Stanilin Oil and Gas in those days. And by the end of the 60s, this technology was in full use by the oil industry. No oil company that expected to stay in business could avoid using digital techniques. If you went to a geophysical meeting in the late 60s and in through the entire 70s, most of what you would hear had to do with signal processing. But that was overtaken eventually by image processing uh, to, to extract subsurface images. One of the great things of getting an education at this place is you're trained to attack new problems. You have the, you're given the tools. All this became clearer to me as I got much older. Original thinking is done at universities. Groups like ERL and, uh, and others at other universities. There you can still let your mind roam.